From Providence, Rhode Island to Perth, Australia, the World Powerlifting Championships, Terry Todd and Bryant Gumbel. These are the sights and sounds of the World Powerlifting Championships in Perth, Australia. on with you at the mid heavyweight class and this gentleman right here Vince Anello from Cleveland Ohio Terry just might be the best mid heavyweight in the entire world <laughs> yes I think Vince has an excellent chance to win this year last year he was second to Paul Jordan in the 220 pound class this year he decided to drop down to 198 pounds where he thought he would have a better chance to win first place we're going to see him compete in the squad and you'll recall as we watched before all these Americans come up they are usually cool and collected when they approach the bar but Vinny lets his emotions Show, Terry. Yeah, psychological preparation is a very individual thing, and Vince is a very emotional lifter, as you'll see. <laughs> is he ever? Let's take it through very briefly what he'll have to do in the squat in order to make it a good lift. Yes, he has to take the bar off the rack and wait for the referee's signal, and he has to go down so that the tops of his thighs are below parallel with the ground, and then come back up and hold still before the referee signals him to put the bar back on the racks. Let's watch Vinny try to deadlift 660 pounds. Can he get it up? The bar bends, but he doesn't. Look at that. Piece of cake. Good lift. Very easily done. Vince Anello from Cleveland, Ohio. Three out of three with the judges. Three white lights. And is he happy or what? Vinny, a very, very emotional guy. And as you said earlier, he holds a deadlift record in three different weight classes. We might note right there that Vinny is a school teacher back in Cleveland. And I do not imagine his students give him too much of a problem. We look on. Our next competitor is Unta Honkanen. They've reset the stage for the deadlift. He will be attempting 705 pounds. He missed this earlier. This is his last chance. If he makes it, he'll get second place instead of third. He might make this. It's going to be hard. Better than lifting. Oh, too heavy. Too heavy. Just, just too, too big a weight to handle. 705 like pounds. That. He gives it a wave and walks away. Now Vince, now Vince will and a half show kilos. really how it's done. This is uh, an attempt at the world record, 810 pounds. He holds it at 804. Look at the muscles on him. He has a terrific structure for the deadlift. Broad, thick, heavy muscles in his back. He works very, very hard on those muscles, and he has a wonderful natural structure. He's you say a wonderful natural this. structure. Let's elaborate a little bit. He has a short torso. Relatively right? short torso, long arms, very, very powerful hands, and very powerful in his hips and lower back. Okay, we take he's chalking right his hands, there. as you see, and he's chalking the bar. That will allow him to hold the bar better than if he didn't use the chalk, keep his hands from slips. See, that's a terrific amount of weight for the hands to stand. Often in practice, they use straps to help their grip, but here this they have to use the hands a alone. This will be a new mid-heavyweight world record. Vincent he really spreads it out, and he will take a look at that bar, which right now weighs 810 pounds with all the weights. Look at him. He looks almost afraid to grab at it. Watch him. He seems to shorten as he pulls. I really think he'll make this lift. He's really on today. This is the best I've ever seen. Let's watch him try to pull it. 810 pounds. Vincent Ello. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Look at that. Look at that. No question. 810 pounds. New world record. He's looking for the lights. In the world championship. I know it's... Oh, yes. There it is. Judges. It is. A good lift. Anello wins the mid heavy class. 1906 pounds. Eamon Cole second. Hunter Hunkin in third. Good afternoon and welcome to Sports World. I'm Bryant Gumbel and I've got to tell you it is a thrill and a pleasure to be able to tell you today that we are speaking to you from the west coast of Australia in the lovely city of Perth. We're here to cover the International Powerlifting Championships and to that end I'd like to bring in right now a man who is a former champion powerlifter now involved in the coaching of the sport, Mr. Terry Todd. Terry, welcome. As we've seen before on Sports World, there is a world of difference between powerlifting and weightlifting. Yes, quite a difference. Essentially, powerlifting is a sport that tests strength. Brute strength, main strength, Olympic lifting tests, strength, flexibility, coordination. Are the tensions involved up there on that stage in proportion to the size of the people we're going to be seeing today? No question about it. 
we're going to see some temper, perhaps? Yes, no question. We'll see temper. We'll see perhaps almost a thousand pounds lifted. The floor may give way. Who knows? <laughs> we're going to see Get set for the earth tremors, because here come the earth movers. Here come the heavyweight guys, guys who tip the scales up to 242 pounds. And Terry Todd, as we watch the spotters prepare the weights on that bar, it occurs to me that it gets very dangerous right now because, hey, if a guy breaks down under that much weight, there aren't many people around strong enough to help him out. Yeah, that's why they have four or five guys out there instead of just two. We look at the first competitor right here as Hanu Surilainen from Finland. He is going to attempt his second squat, 689 pounds. Yeah, he's an Olympic lifter as well, and he squats in a very upright fashion. He puts the bar high up on his shoulders instead of down his back. He uses a relatively narrow foot stance, as you'll see. He's a very tough guy. He's an all-around athlete. Very, very good man. Let's watch him. 689. Yes, he got a good lift. Slow coming up. Hanu Sorolainen makes it go 6-8-9. Terry, you mentioned that he's also an Olympic lifter. Is it difficult to try to, to be successful in both styles? It's extremely hard to be world-class in both events. Sorolainen is one of the few that Here's one of the two entrants from the USA, Doug Young, the favorite in this event. He'll go after 700 pounds in this, his second squat. Even as he approaches his first lift, Doug Young is already an incredible story at these championships. In order to make this weight class and compete in the 242-pound heavyweight class, he had to lose within the last week 30 pounds. And Terry Todd, that has got to take him. Yes, yes, he's weakened. He's not as strong as he usually is, but I think he'll still be strong enough to win. Listen to him. Yeah, Doug growls at the bar. He's got no chance against him. Oh, oh my God. Even the guys who are the best in the world say that this man, Doug Young, is the most impressive power in the world today. Listen to him growl. Look at him strain. 700 pounds he puts on his back. Get set. Get set. Get set. Are you tight? Doug usually quite deep. He's going to go way down and then back up again. Coming up with a 700 pounds. Good luck. Well done. Smooth as can be. Doug Young completing his first lift despite losing 30. Look at this. He, he looks he looks hurt. Yeah, he's hurt. He said he said I broke my rib, I think. Is that possible, Terry? Where did, where could oh, he yes, broken? It's, yes, it's possible. He could have broken one of his lower floating ribs. It's uh, he could have pulled an intercostal muscle. It's hard to say, but if if he heard something go, then he very likely might have broken a rib. Those heavy belts, you see, drive up into the ribs as the lifters in the full squat position. You mentioned, you mentioned the possibility of a muscle pull. Could that be related to the weight loss? Oh, yes, and also the, the rib break also could be related to the weight loss. You see, everything's different when you lose 30 pounds in one week. How does a guy lose 30 pounds in one week? Well, he just literally didn't eat anything during the last week of competition. He couldn't. He also shaved his beard the last minute in order to lose the last few pounds. What price success? I'll tell you, Doug Young is paying a price right now. He has got to be cramping up all over. Yeah, he's hurt. Well, if, if he broke three ribs, it's going to be really questionable as to whether or not he's going to be able to finish this competition. I certainly hope he didn't. And that right there is a picture of agony. Imagine going through all of that agony to lose that much weight, only to come out and the first time you try to pull a weight, you bust a rib. Yeah, he ate almost nothing during the last week. I watched him. Oh. And it was, uh, he didn't use any diuretics, he just died. Tony Fitton from Great As Doug nurses his wound, we take a look at Tony Fitton of Great Britain. He will approach the bar, it holds 739 pounds. Yeah, Tony's one of the greatest squatters in the world in his bodyweight class. Terrific, big, deep chest. He squatted 800 pounds in practice. This should be fairly easy for him. Look how low on the back the bar is. Easy, but he made it. It's a solid lift. I think he'll get three white lights on that. That's great to see. That's a good lift. Yeah. Almost, good lift. A, almost appeared, Terry, that he did not get down deep enough. Well, it was, uh, it's, a, it's close. Those lifters don't go extra deep. They only go as deep as they need to go to get the lift. Look at Doug Young trying to get some assistance as he positions himself for the bench press. He's going to, he's going to try to continue on despite that real kilos. problem. And look what he's going to Doug try to bench press, 507 pounds. This is incredible. Here's a man who has lost 30 pounds and who has a bad rib 
and he's going to try to bench press 507 pounds. Yeah, we'll see. This may tell the story. If he can make this lift. Absolutely. He lets the bar down very slowly. He always does. No. And he just pops it right up. Oh. Look at him. Look at him. Dennis Burke, the coach, is out there trying to give him a little help. Good lift. Doug Young of Brownwood, Texas, is going through some kind of pain right now. Oof. You see his coach, Dennis Burke, one of his teammates, John Orsini, out there trying to help the big fellow off. And look at him come off. Hey, every time you look at him, you got to wonder if this guy's going to make his next yeah. lift. Or even attempt it. Particularly in the deadlift. I just, I mean, he's got a good bench press in now. But the deadlift is where it's really That was a good lift. I really don't see how he can continue. Oh. While he watches on the sidelines, this is his teammate, Clay Patterson. He'll approach for the bench press right now. 500 and yeah, Clay is really lucky to be on the team. He was in one third place in the U.S. Nationals. He's chosen as an alternate that the last minute other people were injured for the next trip, so he's getting lift. This is more than more than he has ever made in competition. Very briefly, Terry, as he takes it down, let's remember that he cannot, once he gets that flat, take it down and then push it. Right? He can't right. take it on hit the net. That was like a good, a good lift. lift. 524 pounds, Clay Patterson. Well, Doug, I know, is certainly not going to want to let Clay Patterson out bench press him. And so even with First broken rib or torn rib or whatever it is, you can bet that the stud horse is going to come back out and give it another shot. Hey, and you can see that he is. He's taken 534 for his second attempt. This big Texan is putting on some kind of show. Yeah, he's wrapping his wrists, getting Doug ready. Young from USA. support on the wrist. Well, Still trying to come out and... He beat the bar with a broken I, I think rib. The, I think the pain is written all over his face. And, and in addition to that, let's let's not forget this tremendous weight loss within the last week. And yet he approaches the bar and will attempt a bench press of 535 pounds. USA. Yeah, that's more than most people can move an inch. Now, the, the spotters, he's hurt so badly that the spotters have to cradle him in their arms and lower him down gently to the bench so he can stand it. Get it done. He uses a very wide grip, as you see. Doug is one of the strongest men in the world in this lift. He uses absolutely no tricks. He uses just muscle. Plenty of encouragement, please. Five, thirty-five. Push it! Push it! Oh. What a piece of work this guy is. Look at this. I just hope he can deadlift. Again. He needs help just just sitting upright. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he's fainting. Now he's that weight loss. I, I, it's catching up to him now. It's catching up to it's him now. It's got to. Oh yes, we well, just 30 pounds in, in seven days. Uh, nobody can lift. stand that. Lifting quite a bit of pain at the moment. Doug Young is. Well, well you is heard the smelling the... sauce. Try to bring him back a little bit. They ought to get him off the platform. We heard they the announcer can. on the stage state the obvious that Doug Young is in quite a bit of pain at the moment. We look again at his bench press, 535 pounds. Doug Young in pain despite the loss out in front of the competition in this class. Could the American coach remove the lifter? In considerable pain, Doug Young needs some assistance to get off the bench. He needs assistance to make it backstage. And once again, the question must be asked, will this incredible man manage to find the courage and the strength to come out and lift once again? Doug Young, despite the pain of three broken ribs, can you imagine, has decided he will continue to compete. First, let's meet the man. Doug Young from Brownwood, Texas, a Midwestern Texas town of 20,000 people. It is there that Doug Young, his wife Beverly, and his two youngsters reside. And what is it like to be Doug Young in Brownwood, Texas? Beverly reflects. Living in Brownwood, where, where he and I both have lived all our lives, so he's a power lifter, big deal. They don't make any big deal about it. In fact, the papers very rarely even carry his articles or keep up with what he's doing. 
what Doug Young is doing when he is not traveling and competing as a power lifter. He is down at the railroad yard, where in the finest tradition of Casey Jones, Doug Young is a railroad conductor. He never confuses the two followers. In there. He leaves the powerlifting at home when he's on the job. Well, powerlifting uh, for strength, of course, uh, there's no way that uh, it could help me on my job because I would not strain to the point on my job to lift anything that like I would do in a gym because I'm very professional. It's either a uh, legitimate lift that will help my power lifting. I will, I will, it's simply I don't do tricks. I'm not going to lift cars for people. I'm not a clown. No, indeed. Doug Young has never been a clown. In fact, he got into power lifting as a way to help himself. I got started in power lifting more or less from uh, just wanting to condition my body and not um, what I would consider go from an athlete to a normal human, which I was always an athlete for. Like all fine athletes, Doug Young pays a price. When he's not at the real yard, he's in the gym. My basic training schedule uh, revolves around uh, every 48 hours, I will train approximately four hours or every other day. On a Monday, I will train strictly powerlifting for nothing but strength in conjunction with, with my powerlifting. And on Wednesday, I will train for what other people would consider for physique or for my looks alone because I think yeah. a person's personality is important in weightlifting as any other phase of the game. And I definitely would not want to be very, very strong and not look very strong. I'd want to look just as strong as I am. Looking pretty is, uh, I think, very important to the majority of the people. And to the people that say it's not important, I would consider they are not really telling the whole truth. I don't power lift. I do lift squat, bench, and dead to keep in shape. I really don't deadlift that much, you know, moving him around, but that's it. <laughs> Have to keep him rolling. Doug Young is actually one half of a famous Brownwood sibling act. His brother Bob is a starting guard for the St. Louis Cardinals. I've been behind him all the way and, and trying to help him any way I could. Uh, we've both been very competitive all our lives, and uh, we try to beat each other, and, uh, and it helps us. Competition uh, improves performance, and uh, it's good for us to work out together. In the opinion of a lot of folks, Doug Young has already exceeded the limits of a human body, but not according to Doug. Your body is capable of so much more than your mind is capable of. Uh, in my opinion, the mind is nothing but a breaker fuse for just like uh, electricity. Uh, when your body gets more than it can take, your mind shuts it off and will not let you extend yourself any further. And a uh, weightlifter, in my opinion, to lift the type of weights I lift, you must learn to discipline your mind in conjunction with your body. And so, having disciplined his mind and his body, Doug Young has somehow found the strength and the courage to return to the stage once again. Terry, it's an incredible story. Yeah, this is it. If he can make this lift, he'll win the world championships again. I don't know if he'll do it. This is going to tell the tale. 711 pounds is all he needs. If he makes this lift, he'll win. Larry! He's calling out to Larry. Larry Pacifico points up the finger number one and taps his chest. Yeah. Yes, indeed. He, he thinks he can win. I'll tell you, in my book, even if he doesn't make the weight, he is. For doing what he has done Doug after Young all that has, and all the pain, here is Doug Young five. approaching the deadlift bar, set at 711 pounds. If he makes it, he will be heavyweight champ. Yeah, he's going to pay the price for this one, I know. The question in my mind is whether he's going to be able to pull it without hurting so bad that he has to drop the bar or without passing out because of this terrific loss of weight. Ice. He's got it, though. Look at that. He's got it. He got it. Doug Young, 711 yes, pounds. And he is in Where agony, but indeed, he is the heavyweight Watch champion. Him. What an incredible success story Doug Young is. As Doug Young accepts his first place medal, he adds his name to a rather celebrated list of super strong men. 
list includes fabled characters of ancient times like Samson and Hercules, as well as modern-day Paul Bunyans like John Davis, Paul Anderson, and Vasily Alexiev. Those three join the super strong list by dominating the sport of weightlifting, a sport whose recent heavyweight history we now explore in another Olympic vignette by Bud Greenspan. I'll be back.